Welcome to our lecture online. In a previous video, we found the two equations describing the wave function on both sides of the boundary. On the left side, where we don't have a potential barrier, on the right side, where we do have a potential barrier. Notice in this case, our potential barrier is smaller than the energy that the particle has, with the result that part of the par particles will be reflected and part of the particles will be transmitted. I said, well, wait a minute, why should they be reflected if the particle energy is greater than the barrier energy? In a classical mechanics, of course, all the particles will continue to the right, but in quantum mechanics, part of the particles will be reflected. And here are the two equations that we found to describe the wave function on both sides of that, that uh, boundary right there, where x equals zero. And we realized that if we set the, if we find out what happens at the boundary here, where x equals zero, if you plug in x equals zero, we get the equation that a plus b must equal c, understanding that d already is zero, because we knew that once the particles go past the initial part of the barrier, none of them will then return once they're in region two, so there's no particles moving to the left. That would be this term right here, and therefore d is equal to zero. Secondly, if we take the derivative of the, both of the functions then, and then we find what happens at the boundary when x equals zero, we have to have continuity here, which means that the slope of the function on the left must equal the slope on the function on the right at x equals zero, which necessitates that k1a minus k1b equals k2c. You'll get that when you set d equal to zero, you take the derivative of both functions, you'll end up with this when you set x equal to zero. So now using those two equations, we're going to solve for b and for c in terms of a. And that way, we only have one single constant, a, which then can be used on both equations, or both wave functions. And that will allow us to find the percentage of the particles that get transmitted and the percentage of the particles that will get reflected. So stay tuned. Here, we start with this equation that we got from taking the derivative of both wave functions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to replace, let's see here, we want to get rid of C, and C is equal to A plus B, so let's replace this with A plus B. So we end up with K1A minus K1B is equal to K2 times, instead of C, we're going to write A plus B. So now I want all the B's on one side, all the A's on the other side, so let's multiply this out. We have K1A, minus k1b is equal to k2a plus k2b. Now I want all the b's on the left, all the a's on the right side, so minus k1b minus k2b is equal to k2a minus k1a. Oop, k1a, there we go. And uh, let's see here. We can uh, multiply everything by negative one. That will make things a little bit cleaner. So K1B plus K2B is equal to, let's reverse order, make that positive, K1A minus K2A. And now we can factor out a B on the left side and A on the right side. So we have B times K1 plus K2 is equal to A times K1 minus K2. And finally, what we try to do here is write B in terms of A. So end up with B is equal to A times, we have K1 minus K2 divided by K1 plus K2. And so there's the first equation. This will allow us to eliminate B by replacing that by this term right here. And of course, I want ending parentheses. And let's see here, keep in mind that K1 and K2 are the wave numbers that are associated with the wave of the particle on this side of the boundary and the wave of the particle on that side of the boundary. And the wave numbers are defined by, of course, the energies of the particle that they have in terms of the energy, I should say, on the left side and on the right side. Next, we want to solve for C in terms of A. So let's start with this equation right here. Let's start with A plus B is equal to C, and that means I need to get rid of, um, I need to get rid of B. And how can I do that? Well, B is defined by this. So let me go ahead and replace B in this equation 
uh, what I have over there. Let's do that. So we end up with A plus, instead of B, I can write A times K1 minus K2 over K1 plus K2, and that equals C on the right. Okay, now I'm not quite there yet. I want to end up with something that looks similar to this. I want to have C equals in terms of A, but I have an A plus this. So it looks like I'm going to need a common denominator on that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have A times K1 plus K2 over K1 plus K2 plus A times K1 minus K2 over K1 plus K2. And that equals C. Uh, let's see here. Let's multiply this out and see what we get. So we can actually we have a denominator, k1 plus k2. And then in the denominator, we can factor out an a. So we have a times k1 plus k2 plus k1 minus k2, all divided by the denominator k1 plus k2. And that's equal to C. And then notice that this K2 and this K2 cancels out. So finally I can have C is equal to A times, in the numerator, I have 2K1. In the denominator, I end up with K1 plus K2. And so there's our second equation that now describes C in terms of A. So now that we've found the value for C in terms of A, and we found the value for B in terms of A, we could replace the constants b and c in these equations, remember that d is equal to zero, so now that we have the two wave functions in terms of only one constant a, that will then allow us to find the number for t and r, t represents the percentage of the particles that will be transmitted, and r will represent the percentage of the particles that will get reflected, but that is for future videos, so stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.